Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In this video, we'll be talking about how to calculate the solidility of a particular solid at a P given pH. In this problem, we are asked to calculate the solubility of this solid with the Ksp given in each of the following conditions, pure water, a pH of 5, and a pH level of 11. Let's start with just pure water. So the first step we're going to do is just write the dissociation reaction of the solid. The iron hydroxide will dissociate. That's a solid, and that's going to dissociate or break apart into the ions. You're going to get iron, and this is a positive recharge. And we know that because the hydroxide ions individually are each negative 1, and there's 3 of them. So this is negative 3, which makes this positive 3 to cancel out and make a neutral. Then we're going to have 3 hydroxides, and each of the hydroxides will have a negative 1 charge. So if there's a subscript with the polyatomic ion, just separated apart, there's 3 hydroxides, not just OH3. Next, we're going to set up an ice table. Solids and uh, liquids, they can be ignored in the ice table, so we can just get rid of this line. And you're dissolving it in pure water. Uh, water initially does not contain any Fe3+, plus, so that's going to be zero. But water does contain some hydroxide. And that's because the pH of water is 7. And if the pH is 7, then the pOH is going to be 14 minus 7, which is which is also 7. And if with the concentration of uh, with the pOH of 7, it will have a concentration of hydroxide equal to 10 to the negative pOH or 10 to the negative 7. So that's actually what we're going to put in right here. 10 to the negative 7. That's the amount of OH that water has before the solid dissociates. Then we complete the rest of the ice table. This is going to be plus x because it's a product. And this is going to be plus 3x because there's a coefficient of 3 here. And then this will be x, and this will be 10 to the negative 7 plus 3x. Then we can set up the Ksp expression. So Ksp is going to equal the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So that will be the concentration of Fe3 plus times the concentration of OH minus because those are the products. The coefficient of 3 becomes the power. And then now we have the expression. Let's plug in the Ksp value. 4 times 10 to the negative 38 equals the Fe3 plus equilibrium value, which is x. And then the OH is going to be 10 to the negative 7 plus 3x. And this is going to be cubed. So since the K value is so small, 10 to the negative 38 is really small, it means that this reaction happens to a very tiny extent and that the x values are really small. So that means we can ignore the plus 3x because this x value is going to be so small in comparison to 10 to the negative 37 that it's insignificant and we can ignore it. So that means this really simplifies to just 10 to the negative 7 cubed. So let's just rewrite that. And then to solve for x, we can just divide both sides by 10 to the negative 7 cubed. So this will be 4 times 10 to the negative 38 divided by 10 to the negative 7, and then we're going to cube that. And then you get x equals 4.0 times 10 to the negative 20. And that's going to be in molarity, and that's the molar solubility. When uh, you're setting up an ice table, and x is always going to equal the molar solubility. So that's the answer for A. Let's just put that over, over here. OK, now we're going to do B. So B is really, really similar. The only difference is that the pH is 5. So we just have to go over here and change the pH is equal to 5. That means the pOH will be 14 minus 5, which is 9. And then the OH will be 10 raised to the power of negative pH, or 10, or sorry, 10 raised to the power of negative pOH, so 10 raised to the power of negative 9. But we'll come back over here and change this to negative 9, and change this to negative 9. So everything else is the same. We're just going to be changing the negative 7s to negative 9s. And so the x value is going to equal this value, Ksp, divided by 10 to the negative 9 cubed. And that gives us 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11. And let's put that over here. And then lastly, for part C, I'm, not, I'm going to show you a shortcut for how we can do this if we don't want to set up an ice table. So let's just get rid of all of this, and we'll use the shortcut to calculate the solubility. 
of the particular pH. Okay, so for the shortcut, we're gonna first look at how many ions in, are in each, how many each ion there are in the compound. There's just, there's a single Fe, so we'll call that X, and then there's three OH, so we're gonna call this three X. So that means the KSP is gonna equal X times three X and then cubed. But we're gonna have to add the, the OH that's already present, that's previously present at a pH of 11. So we still have to do this part where if pH is 11, then POH will be 4T minus 11, which is three. Then that means that the OH is gonna be 10 to negative three. So we're still gonna have to add the OH that's present initially. But the K value, since it's uh, small, we can substitute that in. This is 10 times 10, or four times 10 to negative 38. Since the K value is still small, we can just ignore this, this three X. And so that means X is gonna equal that divided by 10 to the negative three cubed. And when you're entering this in the calculator, it might be helpful to put the parentheses around these up if you're not getting the answers that I'm getting. So four times 10 to the negative 38 divided by 10 to the negative three cubed, and then that gives you four times 10 to the negative 29. And so that means the answer for C is just 4.0 times 10 to the negative 29. So you can see that the compound is actually the most soluble in acidic conditions. And it's the least soluble in basin conditions because this is pH of five is acidic and pH of 11 is basic. And you can see that in acidic condition, it has the highest solubility and in basin conditions, it has the lowest solubility. And that's how you can solve for the solubility of a solid at a particular pH. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going you're gonna to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.